This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Training leaders and professionals for over 40 years, ACI Learning believes proper training is essential to lifelong learning and growth. ACI Learning, transforming the way technology professionals learn to fuel the modern workforce. Visit acilearning.com and let ACI power up your IT team. Checkpoint Research has been looking at the same question, and I got a kick out of the title of, of their uh uh, posting about this, they they called it Opon AI. Uh, cyber criminals starting to use Chat GPT. They published an article a couple of weeks ago titled Opon AI. As I said, cyber criminals starting to use Chat GP. In other words, the research I just noted turns out to be a bit uh, quaint. The use of OpenAI's ChatGPT to create malware is already a reality. In their report, Checkpoint shared three specific case studies that resulted from their research into discussion threads ongoing now on the dark web. The report was illuminating and important for our future, so I'm going to share what they found. They said at the end of November 2022, OpenAI released ChatGPT, the new interface for its large language model, which instantly created a flurry of interest in AI and its possible uses. However, ChatGPT has, has also added some spice to the modern cyber threat landscape as it quickly became apparent that code generation can help less skilled threat actors to effortlessly launch cyber attacks. And again, that's the key. Less skilled threat actors, meaning more bad guys can now get in on this. You need, you know, don't have to know how to code as much. In Checkpoint Research's previous blog, they said, we described how ChatGPT successfully conducted a full infection flow. Whereas, so they were basically doing what the cyber art guys did, using ChatGPT, experimenting with it to see if it could create malware. Yes, successfully conducted a full infection flow from creating a convincing spear phishing email to running a reverse shell capable of accepting commands in English. The question at hand is whether this is a hypothetical threat or if there are already threat actors using open AI technologies for malicious purposes. Checkpoint's analysis of several major underground hacking communities shows that there are already first instances of cyber criminals using open AI to develop malicious tools. As suspected, they wrote, some of the cases clearly showed that many cyber criminals using open AI have no development skills at all. Although the tools presented in this report are pretty basic, it's only a matter of time until more sophisticated threat actors enhance the way they use AI-based tools for malicious purposes. Okay, so three case studies. The first one, creating an info stealer. On December 29th, 2022, a thread named ChatGPT Benefits of Malware appeared on a popular underground hacking forum. The publisher of the thread disclosed that he was experimenting with ChatGPT to recreate malware strains and techniques described in research publications and write-ups about common malware. In other words, you know, using the what these things do as a guide, asking ChatGPT to create something that does that. Wow. As an example, they wrote, he shared the code of a Python-based stealer that searches for common file types, copies them to a random folder inside the temp folder, zips them, and uploads them to a hard-coded FTP server. Okay, now just to, to, to pause, I'll note that that's, that's not anything that would be difficult for any coder to code in any language that they wanted to, right? But... This is presumably somebody who doesn't know how to do that. So ask ChatGPT and out comes some Python. So they said our analysis of the script 
confirms the cyber criminal's claims. This is indeed a basic stealer which searches for 12 common file types, such as MS Office documents, PDFs, and images, across the system. If any files of interest are found, the malware copies the files to a temporary directory, zips them, and sends them over the web. It's worth noting that the actor didn't bother encrypting or sending the files securely, so the files might end up in the hands of third parties as well. On the other hand, you just ask ChatGPT to please use HTTPS, and, you know, it will. The second sample this actor created using ChatGPT is a, is a simple Java snippet. It downloads PuTTY, a very common SSH and Telnet client, and runs it covertly on the system using PowerShell. This script can, of course, be modified to download and run any program, including common malware families. This threat actor's prior form forum participation includes sharing several scripts like automation of the post-exploitation phase and a C++ program that attempts to fish for user credentials. In addition, he actively shares cracked versions of SpyNote and Android RAT, you know, remote access Trojan malware. So overall, this individual seems to be a tech-oriented threat actor, and the purpose of his posts is to show less technically capable cyber criminals how to utilize chat GPT for malicious purposes with real examples they can immediately use. Study number two, creating an encryption tool. On the 21st of December, a threat actor dubbed USDOD posted a Python script, which he emphasized was the first script he had ever created. When another cyber criminal commented that the style of the code resembles OpenAI code, USDOD confirmed that the OpenAI gave him a, quote, nice helping hand to finish the script with a nice scope, unquote. Analysis of the script verified that it is a Python script that performs cryptographic operations. To be more specific, it is actually a hodgepodge of different signing, encryption, and decryption functions. At a glance, the script seems benign, but it implements a variety of different functions. The first part of the script generates a cryptographic key. Specifically, it uses elliptic curve cryptography and the curve ED25519 that's used for signing files. The second part of the script includes functions that use a hard-coded password to encrypt files in the system using the Blowfish and Twofish algorithms concurrently in a hybrid mode. These functions allow the user to encrypt all files in a specific directory or a list of files. The script also uses RSA keys, uses certificates stored in PEM format, MAC signing, and Blake2 hash function to compare the hashes, and so on. It's important to note that all of the decryption counterparts of the encryption functions are implemented in the script as well. The script includes two main functions, one which is used to encrypt a single file and append a message authentication code to the end of the file, and the other encrypts a hard-coded path and decrypts a list of files that it receives as an argument. All of the aforementioned code can, of course, be used in a benign fashion. However, this script can easily be modified to encrypt someone's machine completely without any user interaction. For example, it could potentially turn the code into ransomware if the script and syntax problems are fixed. While it seems that USDOD is not a developer and has limited technical skills, he is a very active and reputable member of the underground community. USDOD is engaged in a variety of illicit activities that include selling access to compromised companies and stolen databases. And of course, now, thanks to ChatGPT, his skills have been amplified. And finally, third case study. Another example of the use of ChatGPT for fraudulent activity was posted on New Year's Eve. It demonstrated a different type of cyber criminal activity. While our first two examples focused more on malware-oriented use of ChatGPT, this example shows a discussion with the title Abusing ChatGPT to Create Dark Web Marketplaces Scripts. 
In this thread, the cyber criminal shows how easy it is to create a dark web marketplace using chat GPT. The marketplace's main role in the underground in the underground illicit economy, of course, is to provide a platform for the automated trade of illegal or stolen goods like stolen accounts or payment cards, malware, or even drugs and ammunition with all payments in cryptocurrencies. To illustrate how to use ChatGPT for these purposes, the cyber criminal published a piece of code that uses uses third-party API to get up-to-date cryptocurrency prices, Monero, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, as part of the dark web market payment system. So they say it's still too early to decide whether or not ChatGPT capabilities will become the new favorite tool for participants in the dark web. However, the cyber criminal community has already shown significant interest and are jumping into this latest trend to generate malicious code. Checkpoint Research will continue to track this activity through 2023. And they finished, finally, there is no better way to learn about ChatGPT's abuse than by asking ChatGPT itself. So we asked the chatbot about the abuse options and received a pretty interesting answer. So, question, how threat actors abuse OpenAI? ChatGPT replied, it is not uncommon for threat actors to abuse the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning to carry out their malicious activities. One way they might abuse OpenAI specifically is by using the company's language model technology to generate convincing phishing emails or social media posts. These could be used to trick people into clicking on malicious links or giving away sensitive information. Another way that threat actors might abuse OpenAI is by using the company's machine learning algorithms to create realistic synthetic media, such as audio or video, that could be used to spread disinformation or manipulate public opinion. It is important to note, writes the bot, that OpenAI itself is not responsible for any abuse of its technology by third parties. The company takes steps to prevent its technology from being used for malicious purposes, such as requiring users to agree to terms of service. Oh, that'll solve the problem. That prohibit the use of its technology for illegal or harmful activities. Wow. As always, the real worry here, which we've seen play out for years, is that the easier it is to perpetrate a crime, the more crime will be perpetrated. In this case, as Checkpoint chillingly noted, quote, some of the cases clearly showed that many cyber criminals using open AI have no development skills at all, unquote. In other words, these would-be ransomware operators have been lusting over the windfalls being obtained by others, but they've been held back by their lack of coding skills. That barrier is now being lifted as code-writing bots become available to do their bidding without ethics, morals, or conscience. Wow. <sighs> Leo? I have to wonder, though, how good, really, the, I mean, look, the, be, you could easily write that code that searches for a file, bundles it up, and sends it out. That's not... Absolutely. That's Absolutely. not complicated code. But crypto, there was some serious crypto there. That's interesting, that was, yeah. That was running crypto and getting a message authentication code and, and <sighs> using public key, pu public key crypto, and it was doing it all correctly. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like Copilot, GitHub, GitHub's Copilot, which writes code for you. It also uses GPT uh, to do it. Um, I presume it's getting that code of some kind from stuff well, it's scanned Leo, into its databases, really, right? Production coders spend a lot of time cutting and pasting, right? Yeah. We, 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 we go find... That's right either our own previous work or right. somebody else's previous work and say, well, this chunk of code does what I need, so drop it in over here. Right, 
Right, and that's that's all this is probably doing. But still, and then you you know you you glue it together. Yeah, yeah. But again, accessibility matters. That's what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. Is, ease. Yeah, yeah. Ease. Yeah. Point of access. Yep.